Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LCK Summer Promotion Tournament. I'm Atlas, joined by LS's Team Dynamics, Take Down Cerebral Gaming, Sora Ball Gaming. That's very difficult for me to pronounce. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It is very difficult. But maybe we won't need to say the name for too much longer because uh, Team Dynamics looked really good in game number one, and uh, they might be able to do it again in game two. Yeah, they might indeed just be able to 2-0 this and take it down here. As we have been informed that Sarabul has selected Blue Side, and damn it, you're way better at it than me. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, you know I, I've been here ten years. Yeah, you can blame it on that. Yeah, you know? okay. <laughs> <Blame> it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. As I, I need another seven years, and yeah. then I'll be able to pronounce Sarabul Gaming that a is little true. bit better. As we'll see what they can do in game two. Blue Side is definitely interesting because. I feel like Aphilios, I, I, a lot of the first picks are very overrated in terms of the power that they actually offer right now. Uh -huh. They're definitely able to be matched and managed. So I feel like Team Dynamics probably feel comfortable going in onto red. And so that's going to be a little bit surprising, but we'll see what the draft has in store for us once we hop into it. I think it's interesting, actually, because I don't know whether Team Dyn Dynamics are one of the teams that, I guess, traditionally benefits from the red side, right? When you've got a top laner without much of a champion pool, you're not able to utilize these counter picks as effectively, right? Because they want a power pick for Rich. Uh, on things like the Lucian, things like the uh, the Aatrox, they're not going to be able to do the counter picking that we see so often from players like Nogri, for example, who is able to use his plethora of champions to get the right matchups. So we'll see what dynamics do. I think Kuzan does have a very large champion pool, and we might see them counter picking in mid lane uh, rather than anything else. But let's see how this draft pans out as we are in the ban and pick for game number two. And uh, Sorabul, let's see what they decide to pick up. Maybe I should just call them SRB. There you go. <laughs> SRB. Maybe that's going to be yep. more respectful. As uh, that's the Lucian ban, and they have realized that maybe banning out all of Rich's champions is a good idea. Lucian. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you got to get it right. Luckian. L ooh. Luckian. Luckian. Luckian okay. has been banned away. Wow. That's a, that's a, yeah, I didn't even think of that one. That was... <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And Eli's also taken away. Grabs. Band here is Olap. Alice. Taken off <laughs> the board. Are you getting a bit flustered? Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can mispronounce as well as you can, all right? As, what do you uh, mean mispronounce? <laughs> <laughs> I can correctly pronounce just as well as you can. As uh, right. Cerebral probably going to be banning Aatrox here. I could imagine five seconds to go. I don't think. I mean, Lucian is double duty because uh, Kuzan has always loved playing that champion, but it is going to be the Corky taken off the board. As Kuzan, with a wry smile on his face, thinking about what they want to ban next. Might just be another jungler, as Trundle probably next on the chopping block, and he is going to be taken away. So, what is the first pick here for Tal? Because no AD carries other than Lucian, theoretically, have been taken away. Sangyun could snap up the Aphelios, but I mean, it's pretty easy for Dynamics to just pick Aphelios Aatrox in this next round and be very happy moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see. Okay, Varus is going to get locked in. Here it is. What? The Aphelios Aatrox. Perfect. Come on, Bion. He might, be, uh, he might actually choose to lock down a uh, jungler here because the jungle pool has certainly been thin. Four bands in that direction so far. And that, that, I think, is going to be their discussion right now. But this was uh, about as obvious as you could possibly get. And Aatrox is going to be locked in. This is It's not the sort of early round Aatrox pick that we would condemn uh, in the LCK. And, uh, I know you're trying to hold back right now. But and, uh, uh, Rich, he plays two champions. So may as well lock in, you know, 50% of his champion pool was banned in the first round. So uh, you may as well pick up the other one. Well, let's see what Sarabul is going to go for. They're going to pick the Jarvan up for Kakao. Now that is a champion that has a lot of modes. Indeed. He can play economy. He can play very low econ as well. Just basically be gank city with the flag and drag everywhere. And what are they going to pair him with? 
And also, is this going to be lethality? Varus, okay. as Mordekaiser comes in. Now, the Atrox versus Mordekaiser matchup can definitely snowball out of control, but we don't know if the Atrox could just be pivoted into mid lane as Sejuani now being picked up by Dynamics, and they're already off to a start where they have a lot of scaling. However, if that Varus is a poke Varus and a control mage comes out on B4B5, for Sarable, things do get very, very problematic because Dynamics, once again, their champions have to go in. They're gonna be melee. And this is really reminding me of the TSM versus FlyQuest series where okay. TSM opened R1, R2, Aphelios, Atrox. I had a three hour video <laughs> you showing did. why that was not good. <laughs> showing why that R1, R2 belongs in, uh, belongs in a uh, garbage, garbage, uh, Facility. Yeah, yeah, facility. Yeah, okay. Um, we did explain why Dynamics did this. It was extraordinarily obvious um, that it was going to come down. And it's just based on comfort. And speaking of comfort, Dan Chung has none of his comfort picks. He's played two games of the Syndra, two games of the Galio so far. And he's one and one on both of them. But uh, now he's going to have to dig deep and find something else. Tarek and the Yumi taken away from Guga. And it's likely that we do see a support pickup here, unless Kuzan wants to just grab something right out of the gate. So the thing about this is that the Zoe, uh, Varus answers it very well. And now this gives Cerebral the option to actually counterpick the Zoe. And there's a, a few choices that exist in its current state. I, I think Kossadin is actually really good here. There's not a lot of reliable lockdown CC on the side of Dynamics as it stands, and there's not going to be a support that's magically going to change that. Yeah. And with Varus building Lethality, it would probably give him easy access. They're going to go the more safe route with the Azir in mid lane, but still, this is a pretty bread and butter way to just let Varus carry you through the mid and late stages of the game, and I, I feel like this is really problematic the Nautilus Four dynamics. is weird for me, though. That's, yeah. that's giving away that Sangyun's likely to be going the lethal tempo route uh, because we often see Poke Varus paired with something like a Morgana, something like a Karma, to make sure that they just trash the lane. But uh, that is not what Nautilus does at all, as Guga is going to lock away the set. Somehow set falls to the final pick on red side. And uh, that is going to be the support choice here, as uh, we'll see how it's going to work out. I think Dynamics got exactly what they wanted, but I think you're right. I think Cerebral's, uh, Cerebral's roster is looking a lot better out of the draft this time around. Now, we don't know necessarily what that even means because on paper, Cerebral's draft, I think, is actually kind of nice. It's, it's very ideal, all things considered. The Nautilus is a little bit out of left field. I'm not totally sure why that champion came in, although there is a, a bit of limited options. Yeah. when you are blind picking the support in that spot. We'll see if Varus does have Comet when the game loads in. However, what last game showed us is just because the composition is okay on paper doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to pilot it the way that it's supposed to be yeah. in order to translate well inside of the game. So maybe Dynamics, even though they have a somewhat sinful team composition, like you were saying, it might just be what they want and they might just be able to coordinate it a lot better than their opponents inside of the game. Kuzan, a bit out of theme with his teammates, but if Zoe gets ahead, she's still Zoe. Yeah, and also their mid game is going to be very strong with the uh, Zoe and the Aatrox there. So it might be that Beyond can uh, spend some time power leveling to level six and then start getting these ganks working when both the Aatrox and the Zoe are feeling powerful. But Team Dynamics now at match point. If they win this, they get into the LCK. This is absolutely huge. Remember guys, if you promote to the LCK, it is $2 million off your franchising fee. Um, as far as the buy-in is concerned, if you're buying in from outside of the LCK, you do have to pay a little bit of extra money just so that we can make sure that it's more likely that an LCK team is, uh, a current LCK team, sorry, is um, able to get into the uh, yep. franchised version of the LCK. 
Dynamics are just one game away from it. And it will be it the, the Poke comment. Varus. Yeah. It's so strange that it's come in with the with the Nautilus. So we'll just have to see how it works. Um, I guess, you know, uh, we're used to seeing players like Deft, players like Teddy uh, playing the Varus. Sang Yoon has always been an, a bow and arrow fan. His uh, Varus and uh, Ash are very practiced. Sort of like a, a little prey um, when he was in the LCK. And uh, still does play these champions very well, but We'll just see. I mean, it does make sense, right? I mean, once you hit level six, there is so much CC out of that duo. That you should be able to lock someone down and kill them, but it's not going to be throughout the laning phase, multitudes of poke, you know? Uh, like what the Morgana option or the Karma option does allow you. Well, we do need to see what is going to happen as this early game does transpire. Who's on taking a very hefty damage now? What we're looking for is the true mark of a Zoe. So, when's the redemption? Where's the redemption? Yeah. I think that we're looking for a redemption ignite redemption here. Uh huh. To really just that'll make show this us a little bit where the good. Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Because it's all a skill thing. If you if you roll more um, redemptions, that just means you're a better player. As uh, Cal, I believe, walked over that ward and is going to start off this blue buff. Guga is going to rotate in as well. Gets that ward down, knows exactly what's going on, but Nova gets the uh, inside track. Kuzan trying to come over, but Dan Chung gets his ward down. And this is just going to be the steal of the blue. Blue buff on the other side of the map is still available, but it looks like Kakao is just going to be able to walk back. So a three buff start for Kakao. Definitely good news for him. As our Moonshot comes in, FaZe gets some free damage on the Nova. And uh, Death's Grass landing here. As we haven't really had a look at the top side, this was Tal's choice into the Aatrox. As Rich is actually having a decent time in this lane thus yeah. far. And with this priority, I mean, he has two options. You can either invade with the Sejuani and try to go for the blue buff and help her out, or alternatively, could have just done a Cheetah Recall picked up a call for himself. He's going to place the very standard ward that gives vision onto the Gromp before just returning back up to top lane. And you can see that Zoe, it seems like Kuzan having a pretty good time here in mid lane as we have a pretty hefty trade. Yeah, base breaker comes down. The Ignite is ticking, but Nova makes his way out. Sangyun, good damage back onto FaZe, who thankfully still has some uh, ammo left in his Severum. That's going to get a bunch of his health back as Kakao lying in wait. Trying to get a counter engage here as so, there are some low health bars on Cerebral's side. The thing is, is that Nova, I don't so think it would ever oh. stand on the right hand side if Darwin wasn't here. And I would imagine that Dynamic should read this. Yeah. And they do back up. And that's just going to waste a little bit of time for Kakao, who is down camp to Sejuani. Huh? Well. Flash used by. Uh, Thal to get out of there. Ward placed by Beyond. And Kakao now trying to make his way up to top lane. This is very strange, though. Because yeah. Beyond, who lost his blue buff, finds himself up a camp, up CS as... Okay. Yeah, Thal looking for Rich here. Great knockup. Death's Grass brings Rich all the way back in. No way that he can do anything as... Kakao with the Jin Air Flare once again. And Nova, max range on the dredge line as Kuzan taking a lot of damage. But lands the Trouble Bubble onto Dan Chung, and that's going to mean a lot less damage that he has to deal with. Holds onto his heal and his flash. And Nova just trying to help Dan Chung get the crash on the wave. Kuzan is going to surrender it. And the wave does go into the turret. That's going to be a barrier picked up by the Zoe. Guger here as well to help shove out. Yep. As Kuzan very low in the HP department. Now, even though Atrox died... Yep. Hanzo. I'm going. Good flash. Yep. From Kakao. Nice oh, nice uh, so, <laughs> I believe, so we heard Kakao's audio. Uh, I, I think one of the things about him is that he plays with uh, his teammates muted. I think really? that's the thing, yeah. I believe he, he doesn't play with, uh, on voice. That's really weird. No, I don't 
maybe Jisun can give us confirmation. It might. Yeah. Oh, maybe just muted game audio is what uh, Jisun's saying, Jisun, which yeah. is very weird. I I've heard he plays muted. Huh. I hear. I I've, I've heard that uh, he does not. Uh, I mean, he keeps his mic open. Yeah. But does not actually have his uh, audio from teammates on. Well, that is uh, certainly strange. I don't know how that could ever be an advantage, but maybe just doesn't want the distraction. Maybe it likens it to solo queue for maybe. him, where maybe. he feels in the zone more with the game than anything else, but I don't know. Can do some research on that if we end up going to a game number three, hopefully, yep, as Dynamics. Uh, Ocean Drink does come up very easily and is taken down by Dynamics. They do have a slight gold advantage, despite the first blood going over to uh, Surable's side. As Arkuzan looks for a bit of added damage there, but doesn't get it. And there's the redemption. I don't know whether that was his first, but um, if that was his second one, then we know that he is a fantastic Zoe player. As Rich avoiding this damage here and will be able to keep the minion wave in a pretty good spot for the Aatrox. Especially now that he has no flash. After that first death, you can see a uh, Bramble Vest completed by Tal. That will help Rich, uh, will help Tal out in this uh, lane very effectively. Being oh. able to deny the healing of the Aatrox. Yeah, they still have the redemption. Now, the Cloud Dragon coming up second does mean that no matter what, we will have an exciting Drake. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing what that would be. If you're Dynamics, you want an Infernal to roll. As Kuzan whiffing on the trade a little bit. Yep. Trying to bait Dan Chung into something. Doesn't work out there. The cow lurking on the top side of the map yet again. There's a cheeky little ward here in this brush that should give Rich an opportunity to understand what's going on here. Still just trying to uh, uh, what? taunt what? Kakao. He knows that Beyond is here. As, uh, once again, Kakao waiting in the brush, but he just walks in and face checks. There's the Death Realm that goes down. So see what Rich can actually do here. Beyond's going to move on in. World Ender comes down, but Rich should still be dead. No! Moves underneath the turret. Will survive for the meantime. And Beyond gets himself away as well. Dan Chung rotates up. That is unable to actually impact the fight. That was very weird. He had a ward. Yeah. Is, is there a vision bug and we don't know about it? Or what? Yeah, I, I, I think it was like it was a bait play or something like that, but uh, very odd to say the least. And okay, so what? Oh my god, he can't see him. The ward's outside the brush, but I believe it's transparent, so I don't. Yeah. Understand. Oh wow. Okay, well that all right that now makes a lot of sense. So. He sensed that maybe something was up, walks into the brush. Yeah. And beyond, almost able to turn it around, but not quite. Well, we were casting that, assuming that there huh? was actually vision, as you can see the ward's dead now. I think it was just slightly outside of the brush. But I think G-Sun might uh, update us on exactly what did happen. As Rich is going to clear this ward as well. Wards have been strange in this tournament so far. Yeah, perhaps it was just at the very outer edge. And that's all that happened as Dynamics, they're still ahead in gold. Yeah. They're up about three, 400. And it's not the end of the world for them whatsoever. They should be in position to get the Cloud Dragon in a minute and a half when it comes up. And we'll see whether the Varus is going to be able to do what he can in this mid game to get uh, Sorable ahead. Because, of course, building towards many, many Dirks. Going to have that first one completed pretty soon. I believe Umbral Glaive likely to come in, unless he goes with the Ghost Blade first off, just to give him that extra movement speed. That is a good trade for Rich up here towards the top side, who's hit that level 8. Has that added 20% CDR. As Kuzan throwing his Paddle Stars around, will be able to clear out this mid lane again, and he has 30 CS in the lead. The Zoe moving into mid game very happily. Well, they're just going to end up recalling here as 
with all constantly getting shoved in by the Atrox, who is up about 15 CS, I believe. Maybe at the end of this all, maybe a little bit less. 35 seconds until Cloud Dragon is going to be available. And, and then, uh, Beyond is reading Cacao like a book. See, lying in wait, Cacao is uh, being very, very patient. Sejuani goes home, but the Javan is still chilling in this brush. Huh? We'll move out and just uh, throw Shelly into the lane. Yeah, they should be able to get the last of these tower plates. Oh, actually, no, it's a bit too healthy there. Yeah, they will get. A f Ooh, will they get the last one? No. So a little bit unfortunate. Now Googer gonna come over. You can see Kakao's in close proximity. Thal even here as well on the Mordekaiser. Yeah, he's taking a. Popcorn chicken camp here. You can see FaZe, he went back to base, is now so, terrible starting off this Cloud Drake. They rotated five members over. Wait. Oh, Dan Chunk just gets engaged on Cougar, making his oh, way into what? the pit. Emperor's divided, huge butt. The Azir is just dead. Two kills already for Team Dynamics, who te whose team fights have been just so damn good. Tal now running away, and everyone is here on Dynamics' side as Kuzan gets over, steals Tal's flash. And Guga comes in with the face breaker. The Brambleback getting involved as well. As that is not enough shielding, and Guga's gonna lock down that kill. Sangyun, no mana, no options. Cloud Drake goes down and dynamics a huge advantage in this mid-game. And I I have no idea what to say there. So they pick a scaling team composition, rotate five to the second dragon of the game, which is a cloud dragon. Okay? And they take the team fight. Kakao is busy starting the dragon. Thal, Death Realm's Kuzan, <laughs> of all people, goes on to the Zoe. And Zoe has a lot of angles there. I mean, she still has her flash available. She has her portal jump. She can really stall the Mordekaiser for quite a long time inside of there. And Dynamics just run away with the game super early on. They pick up the Cloud Dragon for themselves. Let's take a look at this one I more time. And take a look at everything that happens. The Sejuani just getting such insane value here as well. Rich popping <laughs> off He's just on really the Satrox good at again. Oh, man. It, it's once again one of these things where why does he get this champion every time he wants it? We know that this is what he's going to pick every single time. And Sarable is sort of not respecting that particular option in this Mordekaiser pick, much like the Camille, not enough to, to stop him from doing exactly what he wants. And now the gold advantage is about 3,000 here at 14 minutes. Infernal did get rolled. Oh, wow. So that is very big for Dynamics, who... What is Kika? I This is... Uh... Lucifer Morningstar himself right now. <laughs> this game on the Jarvan. Constantly looking for things that don't yet exist. So accounting or hoping that opponents make mistakes before they do. And yeah. this is allowed beyond to get a noticeable CS advantage over him. As well as just always play on his side of the map and constantly match and counter game. Everything that he's tried to do. And it's so peculiar because Garvin doesn't need to play low economy with these champions. He's able to just go tit for tat against the Sejuani, protect the Mordekaiser in the early stages from anything, and let everyone scale up. However, right now, Dynamics, I mean, they're sitting really comfortable here as we are moving now into the mid game. Yep, two minutes on that Infernal Drake, likely to be the next fight here this game. And it's so weird. I mean, I, I felt like Kakao played extremely well yesterday, but he seemed definitely a bit off uh, in today's matches. I don't know what it is. Is Kuzan not gonna find any bubbles here in the darkness? As Dynamics just moved towards this mid lane. You can see FaZe with exactly the right guns for taking down an uncontested uh, neutral objective. 
Dan Chung spots them out here, but I have a feeling they're not going to be able to do enough as five members of Dynamics are in the area. Beyond gets the turnaround ultimate. There's the showstopper into the back line. Emperor's Divide does absolutely nothing as Rich is on top of Dan Chung and will put him in the death chamber. Kakao now out of this fight for good as Rich gets in on top of Sang Yoon. The Death Realm is in. And it's Rich fighting against Tal, and now Tal is going to be too far up in this lane. Gonna get stunned up, the face breaker comes in. Gugur even grabs the kill as Trouble Bubble just barely misses onto Sang Yoon. And Dynamics, they move into this mid lane, they take down the outer turret. They should be able to get work done on this inner, and Shirley is gonna have a really good time here as Rich just showing off some adorable bees as he dashes over and this base game. Really feels like this game is over at this point because it's a 6,000 gold lead at 16 and a half minutes, and Dynamics are six minutes, seven minutes away from Infernal Soul. Yeah. So things are really scary. Sarable feels like it is, it, it's now or never on the second Rift Herald for a mid turret that is one charge away from dying anyway. It's on its last leg. And apparently it was imperative that they try to defend this, and then Dynamics says, thank you very much for feeling obliged to take this team fight as they reward them by killing several and then raising two turrets, so. And now it's 5,000 gold lead, a little bit more than that. 12 seconds until that Infernal Drake does come up. And I think Sorrow will have one more chance for a team fight and taking down Rich immediately is a good idea. World Ender has been parked here as stopwatch Ooh. used by Kakao. Phase down very, very low as Kuzan now up to him to try and get damage because the Infernal Drake has just spawned and Rich and Faze are very low. Now, Rich does have the Ocean Dragon, and you can see he's trying to heal up off, uh, off the Wolf Camp. Yeah, but he Faze, has Death Dance yeah. as well, so that's going to help. It's all about Zoe here and what she can do. Oh, well, there's the Showstopper into the back line. Guga may be going a little bit too early, but the Haymaker keeps him alive. Dan Chung picks up that first kill, but now he's taken down very low. Rich once again with a fantastic team by Kakao. Permafrost taken down. Tal's gonna die just off the back end. And Dynamics looks like they just can't lose team fights today. No, they can't. Uh, it, it, this is gonna be the Infernal Dragon going over, and Atlas, the game is the game. The game's gone. It is a little bit over, isn't it? On its last leg. This is when your phone blinks and says 1% battery. Yeah. That is uh, exactly what's happening. As the set didn't die. <laughs> he so got the long. Haymaker off. And there was just nothing for this Azir to do. Even flashes last second for no reason. Beyond locks up Kakao. Thal goes down. Nice nice <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going to eat dragon and then push midline. Yep. Yep. Sounded a little bit like a song. I liked it though. And this is going to be dynamics even further ahead. Over 7,000 gold now is their lead. Four and a half minutes until that infernal soul is there. But I have a feeling this game may not even have four and a half minutes left in it. As a lead this big at 19 minutes, this game has accelerated like crazy for dynamics. Yeah, I, I have no idea what Cerebral could even hope to accomplish right now because you also have Build-A-Bear Workshop on Mordekaiser through this game. Yeah. So he's not even a champion. He has Bramble Vest and he has Proto Belt, which is doing <laughs> nothing against Dynamics right now. Ophelios has done the least damage in the game. You leave uh, him alone. Close, close him to alone. least damage in the game. As uh, Nova has unfortunately uh, dropped the ball. He missed the cannon. Yeah. Well, Kuzan, he can probably quit okay. at this point. Uh, you think they'd be able to win 4v5? Maybe. Um, Kuzan has actually been playing well in team fights, so probably not. 1-0 and 6 now on the Zoe. Had a good performance. Also has been playing a lot of different champions so far uh, in this particular promotion tournament. And uh, by the looks of things, he only needs to play four unique champions because they will only need to play four games. It might be one of the fastest promotions that we've seen for a team because their games have been short Ooh. as well as Dan Chong gets chunked. Kuzan is going to earn his spot with that particular chunk out. Rich is going to take a blue buff because he deserves it. Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> I think that the, the the blue glamour around his champion yeah, that does is help. honestly, it's very aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. And I think that Rich knew that and decided that much like an Animal Crossing, when you want to dress up, he wanted to dress up as Atrox. So. Yeah. 
really appreciate if you could just recognize him for the fashionista that he is. Well, and Baron taking it 20 minutes, yeah. two games in a row. Yes. Yeah. This is uh, this is really fast. Atlas has two and a half minutes until the Infernal Soul is going to come up. Baron will convert into that, and it's looking like she's all. It, it's all that she wrote here in this game. As Sarable maybe going to have one last stand here. Yeah. Well, whether it's actually like fighting right now means nothing. They trade Flash for Umbral Dash, and now Rich is just spamming his little B emote. The Korean casters are going ballistic, <laughs> if you can hear in the background. Oh, man. That was very, very cute. Uh, but, I mean, why are, you, why are you choosing to fight then, right? Like, fight when there's something to fight over. And in the meantime, try to get back. Try to farm some of these minion waves and get yourself to whatever item spikes you can find. Do have Sang Yoon picking up a couple of items. He's three Dirks worth of lethality, but... When you're not ahead, I mean, he is farming well, right? But you need to be ahead of the clock on lethality for lethality to work. That's just how the stat uh, exists. Yeah. And right now, it's not really working out. Uh, Infinity Edge and the Runan's Hurricane already completed by FaZe. Hasn't done a lot of damage this game, but hasn't really had an opportunity to because uh, the Limelight has been stolen by players like Rich on his Aatrox. And now at this point, Looks like dynamics are just slowly closing in. As one minute until the Infernal Soul. We'll see uh, if a team fight breaks out with the Baron buff still persisting. We could just see the end of the game. Okay! Oh, oh wow, Song Yun has to cleanse to avoid that trouble bubble. And uh, the Banshee's Veil is what he's going to get for his trouble. This inhibitor going to be taken down. 40 seconds until that Infernal Soul is going to be there. We'll see where the dynamics move back to collect that one. The last ditch team fight is going to be happening now as Tal has teleported behind dynamics, but there's a control ward there. He's just been met as he throws down the Death Realm. Now the rest of dynamics are going to have to try and see what they can do. Beyond is there in the Death Realm with him, but look at the damage. The showstopper gets Cougar into the back line. Three man face breaker. Immediate double kill from FaZe as this will just be the end of the game. Kuzan flashing forward, Dan Chung down very low as he has to sit on his fountain That's now. It. And Dynamics speed running the promotion tournament. This is likely a 24 minute victory, maybe not even that as the next Nexus turret is gonna go down. Rich flashing on top of Sung Yun has to flash to his fountain. And Dan Chung is now in the trouble bubble. 23 and a half minutes for game two, 26 minutes for game one. This is one of the fastest promotions that we've seen. And this is a team dynamics that had a one to four record against Sorable Gaming in the uh, Challenger's career. Like incredible performance from team dynamics and welcome to the LCK. Yeah, they made it to the LCK in dominating fashion here yeah. in the promotion series. Sorable will continue on now to tomorrow. Yeah, you can they see Beyond play. is so happy. And Rich as well gets back in, of course, debuted in the LCK. Yep. And uh, Beyond finally back in. It's been a while. overwhelmed. Yeah, he, but he was in the LCK for three years on MVP. Like, played for a very, very long time. And uh, was very disappointed uh, to, to leave. But now, on Team Dynamics, with this gentleman beside him, all smiles is Kuzan. Great to have him back. Certainly ups the handsomeness quotient uh, of the LCK as well. As uh, Guga posing for the camera. And uh, just absolutely overwhelmed is beyond 2-0-2-0. Very, very fast. I want someone to do the calculation of the amount of time spent on Summoner's Rift before promoting to the LCK. Because I think that uh, this team would be up there as up upside down classes beyond. <laughs> Not sure what that's about. Maybe that's a Korean meme. And uh, everyone's just in tears. Everyone's so overwhelmed with emotion. Huge congratulations here. Uh, as this was the series of happy feelings, happy vibes, our next series is going to be the series of sadness. Yeah. Where we have to say goodbye to our first team. And it will be one of our LCK squads. Phase there, the rookie of this team. And he's had a good performance. Yes, it was a bit of a meme that so, he didn't do very much damage at the beginning of the game, but uh, all of his other games were very good.
the, the thing is, is, is Griffin in the next series going to get roosted by the sandbox? Yeah. That is the big question. This is the thing. Uh, I don't know. I feel like anything could happen in that series, to be honest. Uh, our first day was very strange uh, with our Korean teams, but Griffin looked like they should have been able to win. But now that Dynamics has so easily taken down Sorrible Gaming, maybe that means better things for Sandbox. Because Sandbox were absolutely crushed yeah. by that team, but so was Sorrible Gaming. And the, the thing is, is that it's, it's do or die for both of these teams. Sandbox obviously have a tendency to do some unholy things inside of the games. Yes. We'll see what roster they're going to end up fielding as well as we would expect Summit to come out. On the flip side for Griffin, we'll see who ends up coming out in top lane. Yeah. I think that's obviously a big question for a lot of the viewers. And Sword was targeted in their series against yeah. Sorrible Gaming, and that was actually why they lost. In game number one, he got the Orn. He was doing his uh, weird and wonderful uh, backwards ultimates to try and deny the uh, Unbreakable. That was pretty cute, uh, and they won that series very easily. Whereas, uh, the next matches where he was just insisting on playing Mordekaiser over and over again, it did not work out. Yeah. So, we've seen Mordekaiser be a bit of a trap card for the majority of our teams here in the promotion tournament thus far. As uh, this, I mean, Rich definitely for me gets uh, MVP of the series. Yep. Maybe even MVP of the tournament, to be honest. Because yep. he plays the champions that he's good at, but damn, is he good at them. Very controlled Atrox performance out by him. And Dynamics must be feeling pretty good. Oh, hell yeah. After today. So they will have about a month and a half until LCK Summer resumes yeah and we'll see what they can end up doing there as th these were just the really miraculous rotations by cerebral in the game miraculous is a very interesting way of describing it's an it. antonym it was, yeah, yeah. Rich, rich used the uh death's grasp to taxi himself into position that was actually really cool i don't know whether he did it on purpose but he did it and it looked pretty cool as, uh, by this stage, guys, the game was over. Um, even though Guga gets taken down at the beginning of this fight, he survives for way longer than he should, and the rest of his team was there to pick everything else up. Well, this does mean that we are... Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pay attention, we'll listen in on this fight. Yeah. <laughs> ゴールで打てるかそう。あ、ちょっと、ちょっと。あ、やけ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょっと。あ、ちょ
Congratulations on the win and promoting to the LCK. First, I want to hear you from the coach of Team Dynamics. You looked really emotional and happy. Yeah, I'm super happy that we made it. And this was like the last opportunity for us after the three consecutive challenge and you know there are a lot of players and a lot of stories so we really wanted to make it happen <laughs> yeah i know the game was not easy right so what was the most memorable moment in your head right now well, during the split, we were a little bit lost, but no one actually gave up. We tried to become more solid as a team, so we were able to push it through here. Especially, well, Sorable was so strong during the regular split, and you guys never managed to get a win away from them. So what, how did the preparation go? Well, to be honest, we never thought that we were like on a different level compared to Torable, even during the regular split. It was just our mistake that made us to lose the game, so we tried to focus on our own plans. And also we thought Kaka was really the fact, um, most important player, so we tried to kind of keep our eyes on him. So what was the focal point for today's draft? Well, we thought they would bring some unconventional picks. But since we actually locked in our top champion really early, they were actually rushing to also lock in to their top picks. So, how would you like to rate yourself as a coach? Well, I still got a long way to go. And a little bit clumsy, so I want to give seven, maybe. Is that too high? I will keep working and keep improving. The god of Aatrox, Reach! So, the king coming from the heroes of the storm. You know, we were paying a lot of attention to you, even start beginning up your career in LCK. I'm really happy that we got a win today, and I prepared a lot of cards, but sad that I was only able to play Aatrox. You got a lot of nicknames after today's game. The faker of Heroes of the Storm, a creature that came across the Heroes of the Storm. So which one is your favorite? Well, since I was the the Heroes of the Storm pro players, I like the, um, the King of Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> so, you roll stop to top lane, and this was a very successful run. Well, I was bad at mage champions, that was the main reason. And Dynamics also contacted me, giving me, offering me a good opportunity. So you're heading to the LCK and you'll be facing a lot of different teams. So is that a team that you really want to face against? <laughs> Genji? Because I'm from Genji, so... Yeah, I, want, I just want to have a good match against them. And let's move on to Beyond. It's been a while. Long time to see. Hi, good to see you back. You were literally from the MVP, the org. So how do you feel to be back on LCK? 
I mean, I don't know how to express this feeling. I'm just, it feels super nice. <laughs> so, with the per, um, ceremony after game, that was actually from Kusan. He asked me to do it if he wins. I want to ask you about the Dragon Calls because it was, it was really on point. So, how was your jungle competition up against Kakao? Well, personally, for some level, I was a little bit sloppy, so I can't say I'm fully satisfied, but anyways, I got a win, so I'm fairly satisfied with my performance today. And you've been to a lot of a lot of roads in LCK, you know, through the thick and thin. So, you are finally back in LCK. How do you feel? After I got relegated, I hit a lot of hard times. But promotion was the only goal I was chasing after, so it's a big relief that I made it. So, is there any particular person that comes up in your head? Someone that comes up in my mind right now? Maybe in last November? I mean, our I had a problem with teams and one of my friends, he gave me a lot of help, so I was able to come up this high. <laughs> I know, this team packed with players with a lot of stories and they finally made it. And let's move on to Kuzan, the best mid laner in Challenges Korea. And it's now your time to prove yourself at the bigger stage. Well, in last spring, I also did the promotion series and I had a lot of blunders. But I'm happy that I finally made Team Dynamics to qualify for LCK. We had, we had a lot of interesting mic checks after game one because someone was like, actually, being mad, like, I told you to be careful. I mean, I was keeping the um, jungler's gank in my mind after the game. Kuzan, you, you know, you had a very rough journey in LCK as well, right? Yeah, so we weren't able to do a lot of practice with LCK teams, but since we are now promoted to LCK, we will do our best to reach the higher spot in LCK. Let's move on to phase. Well, today was not the best day for you to like outshine because the game ended really early. So as an AD carry, it was wasn't that a little bit frustrating? But well, before today, I think I have shown myself a lot, so I wasn't paying too much attention about it. Yeah, I mean, you were popping off yesterday. And did you feel any pressure playing here at the promotion tournament? First of all, how do you feel heading to LCK? First of all, I mean, it feels super happy. I'm kind of blanking out. I want to show stronger performance at the LCK stage. Face your new face to LCK. So Guger is one of the experienced player right here. So how was the teamwork with him? I mean, Guger has a really nice personality. He always helped me out so much. So he was so helpful in and out the game. So since you are a new face to the LCK fans, any message for the um, LCK fans? 
I will try my best to show good performance. So please um, show us your support. Uh, Lastly, the team's captain, Guger. I saw you holding back tears after getting the final win. How do you feel right now? I mean, I've been to this promotion tournament for so many times and it's really suffering. Even everyone is done with their split, we have to keep going. And if you win, it feels really nice, but if you lose, you have to go down again. So it gives you a lot of pressure. But this time, I think we promoted because we were good, so it feels super awesome. I mean, yeah, as you mentioned, the Permisha tournament itself is a very stressful tournament, but you had six promotions so far. Was there any big difference? As a master of the promotion, I had this feeling when we, whenever I made it to LCK, when our team was not shaking and when we were sure about the matchup during the draft, I had this feeling that we can get good results. And this time as well, even the day before the promotion, I told my teammates, as a master of a promotion, I have this feeling. We are going to LCK. I mean, if we had POG vote today, it would be so hard because every five players are doing a great job. Who would you like to give your own POG to? Well, our team needs a very active jungler because our laners really want a lot of weight priority and they always make call. From the junglers, they always call the back for the backups, but you know, Beyond was always consistent and sustained throughout the game. And now, since you are heading to LCK, you have to face against Secret, your former teammate and also your rival. When we were in the same team, we were good friends. But <laughs> he started to kind of not reaching me out since he joined the LCK, but still he's a really nice guy. But still, we have to win the match. Then, is there any message for Secret? Since we are in the same league, LCK, please hit me up. And I hope we can have a good game together. Cougar, as a team's captain, a lot of LCK fans are fascinated by your performance. So any last message for the fans? Our team was not really dominating in Challenge Korea. Sometimes we were having a slump, but we prepared really hard. And with a good result, we are heading to LCK. We will keep up the hard work to get good results in the LCK League, so please keep supporting us. Thank you. So, this will be the end of the interview with Team Dynamics players and the coach, and I'm going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisun, as usual, for the interview translation. Fantastic to hear from Team Dynamics and a well-deserved uh, spot in the LCK for them. Winning in 26 minutes and then 23 minutes against a team that you have a 1-4 record against is uh, pretty impressive. And uh, I do want to see that stat of uh, the amount of time spent on the Rift in a promotion tournament before making yeah. it in because uh, that was the speedrun. And now we'll see whether it's going to be Sandbox speedrunning their way out of the right. uh, promotion tournament because they had a very rough day one. And now we're looking to see whether they can uh, survive against Griffin in our next match of the day. It's just going to be so surreal having to say goodbye to either Sandbox and Griffin when they were so dominant, and even immediately after promoting to the LCK. If I'm correct, there's no Challenger Series in summer, right? I don't think so. So this is it? I mean, this is the last promotion tournament, right? So I don't know whether Challengers is there, therefore going to stop and just have no promotion opportunity at the end. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know what's going to happen there. If we do get some extra information, we will make sure that we let you know. But as you can see here, congratulations to Team Dynamics. Sorrowable Gaming are going to have another opportunity against the winner of our next match tomorrow. That will be a best of five series.
for the final spot in the LCK. And that will be between either Sandbox or Griffin, but we'll be waving goodbye to one of them uh, in about 30 minutes' time, guys. We are going to go to a short break, but saying goodbye to Sandbox or Griffin is a surreal feeling, and we'll see who it's going to be after the break.